special Diwali show. I'm Prashant and with me is my colleague Nigel D'Souza. And we're going to be talking markets today with uh, Monish Pabrai. Monish needs little by way of introduction, uh, but very briefly, he's the founder and managing partner of Pabrai Investments Funds. He also wrote the now famous book, The Dando Investor. Monish is also the founder and chairman uh, of the Dakshina Foundation, which is focused on providing world-class educational opportunities to economically and socially disadvantaged gifted children around the world. Welcome to the show, Monish. Uh, great to have you with us here. Let me start by asking you about your view on markets here and now. You know, we've started to, we're starting to get some drawdowns here in India. Uh, the dominant uninterrupted mental framework has been to buy the dips nonstop. It has worked out beautifully so far. Do you think we are still broadly in a bullish up and up environment for markets? Well, uh, Prashant and Nigel, nice to be with both of you. Been a while. And uh, wishing you uh, and your families a wonderful and happy Diwali. Great year ahead. Hope you have a prosperous, uh, prosperous year ahead. Uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, basically, you know, I'm a bottoms up stock picker and I don't really uh, have market views that I think you should hang your hat on. So uh, I think when I, when I find a business that I can understand and I can figure out its value and it's trading at a significant differential from that value, uh, I get interested. I think that uh, in terms of markets and the volatility uh, to the extent that it helps you acquire a position well below what it's worth. It's wonderful. And the uh, rest of the time, you don't really need to do much. So uh, I don't particularly pay attention to, you know, the, the wiggles in the market, if you will. All right. Uh, Monish, good speaking to you after a while. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to focus on a couple of aspects and one would be real estate. Uh, I remember you saying you take few big bets, but you take big ones. And a couple of them in the real estate basket at SunTech and Colty, to name a couple of them that your fund is, uh, you know, invested in. Uh, some of them have done pretty well. You know, they've started moving up. The real estate cycle, so to say, is turning around. If you have to rate it from 1 to 10, which part of the cycle are we in, in terms of the real estate cycle here in India? Yeah, so I don't, I don't actually uh, look at it that way. I don't look at it from a... Uh, from a cycle point of view, my my interest in the in the real estate sector in India was really ignited in uh, 2017, right after uh, uh, demonetization, mm -hmm. and that actually delivered quite a shock to the sector. It actually collapsed valuations, and if you look at the prices of pretty much any real estate company in the you know late uh, 2016, early 2017. Uh, they were trading at a fraction of very quick liquidation value. So the market was really spooked out at that point. And, uh, and then you had additional things come in. You had RERA come in. You had GST come in. So the end result of all of these things, and including now COVID, has been that the unorganized uh, developer uh, has basically been shut out or it's on its way out. And the organized, high-quality, high-reputation players uh, the game has come to them. So this is a, this is not so much cyclical. I think it's a secular shift. And so the secular shift that uh, real estate has gone through in the last few years is that the movement from the unorganized to the organized. And, uh, and uh, the other thing that uh, COVID delivered uh, quite a, you know, a number of things uh, as far as COVID goes has caused permanent changes globally in terms of how we as humans uh, live. You know, it's changed our habits permanently. So one of the things that is a global change due to COVID is uh, a hybrid uh, work environment is here to stay, kind of a mix of working from home and working uh, in the office. The big surprise for most employers was that productivity did not go down when people were working from home. And so, I personally found that right. when so, I was working, more so, productivity went up. Right. So, Monish, a short point you're telling us is that you continue to remain bullish on the real estate space here in India. Yeah. So, what, what I would just say is that, you know, if people had a one-bedroom, they want a one-and-a-half or two-bedroom. People had a two-bedroom, want a three-bedroom. And so, in, in a place like Mumbai, for example, uh, basically the way lifestyle was is you left early morning, you came back late at night, 
and you hardly ever saw your mother-in-law. And <laughs> what happened with COVID is that you had to have lunch and breakfast and dinner with your mother-in-law and suddenly people needed more space. <laughs> and, and so that is a permanent change. And anytime you cause, and we've seen this in the US where if, if you have you know, 80 or 100 million households and everyone wants even 10% more space or even some portion, mm. you just cannot deliver that amount of space in a single quarter or year. So the only thing that can happen is price will go up. In India, what has happened is that the ready inventory has been absorbed. And probably the next step in the next maybe year or two, whenever, is that uh, we'll start seeing prices move up as well. Mm. Uh, Monish, uh, I, you know, you began by saying you're a bottom-up stock picker, not very really, really looking at taking a market view, uh, and we get that. Uh, but like uh, sort of, you know, your thought process in real estate, can you run us through what, where else are you uh, finding these opportunities in these businesses that you already own that you may want to own, uh, where what they're trading at is well below what they're actually, you think, uh, they're worth? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I'm... I'm looking for what you would call no-brainers, you know. So uh, it it should be obvious that, um, and you know, even when we think they're no-brainers, we're going to be wrong one out of three times. So, but being wrong one out of three times, you're going to do really well in the markets. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, we made an investment about three years ago uh, in a company in Delhi called uh, Indian Energy Exchange, for example, and. Uh, I think over the years, last few years in India, I must have met or visited with at least 200 companies and management teams, uh, listed companies in India. And I would say combination of business model, management, and uh, just culture, uh, I would rate IEX as number one out of the entire 200. And so I was really impressed with the business, really impressed with the management and it's an incredible business, something like close to 80%, 75 or 80% of revenue is their pat. Hmm. Uh, I mean, hmm. there's almost no businesses that can do that. So, so their, uh, their operating leverage is tremendous. It's, a, it's basically a monopoly business, extremely well run. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and now the game is coming to them with uh, more and more of the power going through their server. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I had to pay up. I, I'm not used to paying up, you know, as Nigel knows, you know, I'm a P or one kind of guy, uh, but I felt like I had to pay up for IEX and uh, I think it was a good thing that we paid up. All right, and uh, IEX has done well. I think it would be a four bagger for you or thereabouts. Uh, continue to remain positive on it, right? Yeah, I, I think it's got a long ways to go okay. and I think they're just spawning new businesses, so. Okay. I hope I'm smart enough to keep it for 10, 20 years. All right. Oh, okay. So it's a long-term bet out there. The other one that you've got into is Edelweiss, you know, in the last couple of years or so. So from the financial space, I think uh, that's one of the stocks that you hold. Um, rational out there? I think Edelweiss is a, is a, is a wonderful collection of businesses. Uh, they, have, uh, they have distress and headwinds with their uh, balance sheet lending, which caused them some indigestion and hiccups, which you know caused the valuation uh, to go down quite a bit. Uh, but but if you if you look at the rest of the business, uh, it's it's a wonderful collection of businesses with very strong tailwinds long term. I think they will eventually. I mean, they put they already put their lending on runoff, and so. Over time, their balance sheet lending will pretty much, I think, be, become pretty muted or disappear in the next few years. And then, uh, you know, wealth management, asset management, insurance. Mm -hmm. These are, these are, these are. In, in India, we have we are so embryonic in household wealth being in these types of areas that it's just got a very long ways to go.